right, it's time for us to begin our meeting. Feel free to continue to finish up. I want to thank Francis. Thank you, Francis, for providing our meal. It was delicious, as always. A few announcements before we move into our program. Uh, the first is, is that our chamber office is going to be uh, having some new hours, and we're going to have those posted pretty soon. Unfortunately, we don't have a PowerPoint today to display that, but I'll read it to you if you want to jot it down. And you can always call the office to check on the hours as well, and we'll be sure that they're posted in our newsletter and other outlets as well. But those hours are going to be Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. That's Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's going to be the new office hours for the chamber office. Next month, we're going to recognize our first quarter Chamber of Excellence Award, so be on the lookout for that. Our March meeting is going to be held at the proposed Boys and Girls Club site, which is the Old Wayland School, Together We Care, um, previous location. So be looking forward to uh, coming and learning a little bit about that and kind of seeing a new venue. So we will not be here um, next month. We'll be at the proposed site for the Boys and Girls Club at the Old Wayland School. have a first drawing we're going to draw for our March Business in the Spotlight and our Business in the Spotlight will be Ohio County Tourism Commission. So Jody, um, we will get the information from you and get you in there. And that's a perfect segue to another announcement from the Ohio County Tourism and that is that the Board of Directors is currently in need of a representative from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Tourist Commission is governed by KRS 931 and requires a seven-member board uh, from different organizations throughout the county. And that process, Jody can kind of walk you through that and let you know um, a little bit more information. It's only a one-year term, and you review. You can re it's renewed every May, and the board meets monthly on the second Monday of the month at 5:15 at the Bill Monroe Museum. Uh, so. If you or someone from your business organization may be interested in sitting on the Board of Directors for the Ohio County Tourism, uh, please pass that information along and uh, get in contact with Jody and she'll be sure to uh, kind of help you along that process. Our door prizes today, we actually have two. Those are provided by Purdue Farms. So our first door prize in the back is a bag full of goodies there that Judy has in the back and we're going to draw that now so get your red tickets out. That winning number is 608-883. That's 608-883. All right, Tyson. All right. Good member here. It'll be in the back for you to pick up. And we also have one more uh, door prize that was kindly uh, given from the Purdue Farms as well. As a grand prize, it's a one case of chicken. All right. So that lucky winner is 608852. 608852. All right. Ed. Ed Crawwinkle. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Also, uh, an extra congratulations also is in order for Tyson Santaford for being recognized as the Kentucky Farm Bureau 2018 District 1 Agent of the Year. So congratulations. <laughs> we have a lot of successful people here, a lot of people involved in different organizations. We like to recognize all of those uh, as the time comes. Over the last... Uh, few months, has anyone else had an award or recognition from their respective businesses that uh, they would like to announce at this time or that you could announce for them? As always, we'd like to celebrate those victories and some of those great accomplishments with all of our chamber members. So if you will, please um, direct that information to our chamber office and we will get that out in our publication and we would like to celebrate with you as fellow members of the Chamber of Commerce. 
So keep that in mind. I'd like to also remind everyone that the dollars for scholars box is back there. It's already got some dollars back there, a few more. If you have a moment on your way out, please take out a dollar or two and drop it into that bucket. That goes for our scholarships that we award uh, to our lucky high school uh, soon to be graduates to help them further their education. Um, and so please contribute to that uh, on your way out. There are also business directories that are in the back at that back white table, uh, brand new updated printed ones. We've had some new uh, chamber businesses join, so please pick up a few of those and, uh, and display those proudly at your business and help spread the word of all of the great businesses that we have here in Ohio County. Is there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? All right, well, I would like to take this time to introduce our speaker for today from Purdue Farms in the back, Brittany and the rest of the crew back there. But Jerry Moore, the accounting manager there at Purdue Farms is going to share a few words with us. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Jerry Moore. I'm so glad you clap now instead of afterwards, so because you don't get to clap afterwards, it kind of hits your uh, ego, right? Uh, it's so good to be here today and represent uh, Purdue Farms. Can everybody hear me all right? Uh, it was interesting today that Brittany got with me and um, said, would you mind to come out and represent Purdue Farms and speak for us today? And that was about... Uh, 7.30 this morning, and I'm like, um, uh, sure. So, so I, I prepared a few notes uh, today. So uh, let me get a few uh, personal things out of the way. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Ohio County, very proud to be so. I was born here at Ohio County Hospital in 1972. I was uh, raised in uh, McHenry. That's where my mom and dad still live. Graduated from Ohio County High School in 1990. I uh, was on scholarship and got to go to Western Tech University. Uh, graduated from there in December of 95. And as uh, graduation date from college was looming, I had to start thinking about this thing called a job. Maybe you've heard of that, right? So what am I going to do? Okay, I knew I wanted to be an accountant from the time I was a uh, freshman in high school. I uh, didn't really realize I was going to be counting dead chickens, but I knew I was going to be counting something. And... Uh, there was this uh, day, September, October, down here at the community center, uh, taking applications for a company maybe locating here. Didn't really realize who they were, went, stood in line for an uh, hour and a half for a two minute interview and filled out an application. We're not taking office people now, we'll put it on file, thanks a lot for coming out. Pretty much I forgot about it. Um, that December, uh, I took my last final exam. I was working at Sumatoma in Morgantown at the time. I uh, got home from work that day and my dad uh, had left me a note that I'd got a call from Purdue Farms. Well, who in the world's Purdue Farms? <laughs> Give him a call and they said that we'd like you to come out for an interview and we went and interviewed and uh, they roasted us slowly over hot coals for about an hour. I'm like, man, ain't no way I'm getting that. So go home, uh, working, thinking about, okay, where am I going to get a job at? and early in January they called and offered us a job as a uh, accounting clerk. And uh, so January 22nd of 1996 we started. Our first day of the company was actually in Accomack, Virginia, uh, training out west, or excuse me, out east uh, for a few days. Then come back here and we've been blessed since then. About a year and a half later we got promoted to a, a salaried accountant then grew to accounting supervisor, senior accounting supervisor, senior senior accounting supervisor, and now we're the accounting manager. So what about this company, Purdue? You know, hadn't never really heard of it. Uh, wasn't a whole lot of product out uh, uh, in the Midwest at that time. Very well known product if you live on the shore out on the uh, East Coast. Uh, well, Purdue Farms, we're getting ready to celebrate our centennial. Uh, the company started in 1920. Uh, a man by the name of Arthur Purdue, who was a agent for the railroads, got to notice the people driving the nice fancy cars and living in the big houses. We're in the poultry business. 
Uh, and he got to thinking, wow, I'd like to do that. So he quit his job at the railroad. Him and his wife went in business. Started out with about 30 chickens in the backyard. We raise a few more than that now. Um, they went from there. Uh, we originally were uh, producers of table eggs. Uh, Frank's son, our Arthur's son Frank, was born that year and in 1939. Uh, Frank realizing he wasn't going to be able to make a go in professional baseball, uh, went to work as the third permanent uh, employee, full time employee for his dad. And uh, they got into raising birds uh, for others. Uh, they got into the feed business in the 50s. In 1968, they uh, acquired their very first harvest facility in Salisbury, Maryland. And we, so uh, today we call ourselves completely vertically, vertically integrated, or what we call farm to fork. Uh, we produce our own eggs, hatch them. Uh, they're raised by independent family farmers. They're sent to plants like ours here in Cromwell, where we harvest those, uh, produce those into um, uh, exciting meals like we just eat. Um, some of our product goes to cook plants where it is uh, further processed into all kinds of variety of things. And uh, we have our own sales force, we have our own delivery force, so we pretty well control every area of distribution uh, for chicken in some way, shape, or form. Uh, in addition to poultry, we're also into other proteins as well. We have a turkey facility up in Washington, Indiana. Uh, we also, through some of our acquisitions, uh, we're in the pork, beef, lamb business. We're also pet food and pet treats. So let's get back down. So that's kind of Purdue as a whole. And just real quick about Frank, uh, before we talk about what was happening here back in 1995-96, uh, Frank was a very unique individual. In the 70s, he was the very first person that branded chicken. And up to that time, chicken was a commodity. Uh, he put his name on it. Uh, he uh, started first uh, in newspaper ads in New York, uh, and then in about 1976, uh, he made the first television ads. Uh, and you can still go to the park in Salisbury, Maryland, where he made the very first ad, and his punchline for product was, it takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. Uh, now, when they moved our very first uh, product down into Mexico, and they started advertising that, they had a miscue in the translation, and it actually uh, translated as it takes a sexy man to make a tender chicken. <laughs> so, and you kind of got to know how Frank, Frank was a guy that he was kind of quiet and, and reserved until you started talking about chicken. He was very, very uh, intense when it came to chicken. Somebody tried to tell him a joke one time, hey Frank, why did chicken cross the road? Imagine his surprise when he was let go because he let one get away. <laughs> so, what was happening in Ohio County back in the mid-90s? Well, folks, it was uh, a lot different than it is today. Uh, not a whole lot of options. Coal, which had been king for decades, was pretty much on its way, was out in the 90s. My dad is a retired coal miner. In the mid-90s, he was driving over 80 miles one way to Morganfield, Kentucky to work, and that's where he retired from. Tobacco, which about every uh, farmer had, whether he was a major farmer or whether he was on the side, he had tobacco. Tobacco was on its way out. I spent a lot of time of years growing up out in the tobacco patch. You don't see a whole lot of small farm, family farms of tobacco anymore. Uh, Sumatoma, who was the, uh, one of the bigger uh, 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 employers at the time over in Morgantown, uh, was in the process of shifting their business to Mexico. So folks, our opportunities here back in the mid-90s were limited. And thank goodness that Purdue Farms seen something here in this part of Kentucky. Uh, and they come, they started uh, the process in 1995. Um, our first accounting uh, supervisor there was the third person. He was hired on January 3rd of 1995. And they started uh, uh, with groundwork out there just before you get to Cromwell. And got the hatchery done. Uh, started talking to farmers, getting them to make a quarter million dollar investment in some chicken houses on something that when was this thing going to fly or not, right? And but we had enough farmers believed in us. And uh, February 1st, of 1996, we had our very first uh, test batch come through the plant, about 600 chickens. On February 6th, we had our first batch that we actually produced in the product, about 6,000. And what I have here with me are feathers from the very first bird processed at Purdue Farms. <laughs> now, when I show this, I, I sometimes ask people, like, do you think I'll ask four questions. Number one, how many people think that I, Jerry Moore, went out there and picked these feathers off that first bird? B, how many people think somebody that did it give these feathers to me? Number three, how many people think uh, you got those feathers from just somewhere and telling them there was a the first bird because you don't think they'll ever double check it? 
And number four, how many people have not understood the question so far? <laughs> So we're very proud to have that. We was actually given that. Now we was uh, there, uh, but we went out on the floor. So that's something that's very special to me. So we started out uh, production there in 96, and I think it's been a success. And we thank the good Lord for that. Uh, we currently uh, employ about 1,300 associates in all of our operations uh, throughout Kentucky. Uh, we have 138 independent family farmers that raise uh, our product for us, and 40 of those are right here in Ohio County. Uh, we source all of our grain that we feed our birds locally, and that's every bit of about 420,000 tons a year of locally sourced grain uh, and soybeans right here from this part of Kentucky. In addition to the uh, harvest facility, we have a hatchery there. It's, the, it's Purdue's biggest hatchery that we have in the company. They can hatch, uh, have the capacity to hatch almost 1.6 million birds a week. Um, we also have, uh, we uh, treat our own water and wastewater. At Livermore, we have a grain receiving operation on our feed mill that feeds all of our birds. At Leachfield is where our breeder headquarters is operated. Here in Beaver Dam is where our grow out operation is headquartered and also all around the state are other uh, grain facilities and feed mills. Uh, Purdue has quite the presence here in uh, the western part of the state of Kentucky. Uh, our birds uh, at Purdue are all, uh, we call them NAE, uh, no antibiotics ever. Uh, they're all vegetarian fed. There's no animal byproducts goes into our, uh, our chickens. Uh, we uh, do not do organic here in Kentucky, but Purdue Farms is the, larger, is the largest <coughs> producer of organic uh, chicken in the United States. And so most of our chicken is kind of on the high end. Uh, we take a lot of pride in what we call QSR, quality, service, and reliability. The quality of our product, uh, we're not content to be at USDA standards. We have a full QA uh, department there at the plant to make sure that our product is, meets and exceeds the standards that the government has set. Um, we put a lot of time and effort into packaging and research on packaging and, and uh, how to um, uh, distribute our product. Um, In addition to that, uh, all the electricity we use generated right here in the state of Kentucky. All the natural gas we use, once again, sourced right here from Kentucky. All the diesel fuel that our uh, fleet of trucks uses, whether it's delivering feed, uh, delivering chicken, um, taking our product to the stores, is sourced right here from local sources. Uh, we pay property tax. Our uh, associates here in Ohio County pay local income tax. And what they say is every dollar that you earn in this probably passes through about six different hands in the community. So we're very proud to be the largest employer in Ohio County and to make that kind of an impact. Uh, some of our brands, when, in addition to Purdue Farms, if you ever see Harvest Land, you'll see that Walmart was produced right here in Cromwell. If you go to Kroger's and you see Simple Truth, that was produced right here at Cromwell. Uh, at any one time, we got about 8.4 million birds out in the field being grown once again by independent local family farmers. Uh, there at the plant, when we started, we were producing 600,000 um, birds a week. Uh, we've more than doubled that. Now we do 1.25 million birds a week. Uh, so we have grown considerably, more than doubled. Um, I think these are some interesting statistics. As an accountant, I, I like numbers. Let me throw some numbers at you. Since we began on February 1st, 96, through the end of January 2019, uh, we have harvested 1,146,251,676 birds at our facility here in Cromwell. Now, how many pounds is that? Well, that's 6,964,197,345.28 pounds that we have produced at our plant here at Cromwell. I'm very proud to be able to do that. Um, Even though I throw out a lot of big numbers, uh, folks, Purdue Farms couldn't work if it wasn't for people here in Ohio County. It takes people, it takes people. We have a lot of automation, but guess what, folks? 1,300 people it takes. And people are our greatest resource and every person's got their own story. I'm here, I've shared part of my story with you. And, you know, I'm just one of many. Uh, everybody in here has your own story. And sometimes we're not careful, we get caught up with statistics and trends and, and you know, we look at facts and figures. But folks, doesn't it come down to the individual and the person and the story they tell? And I'm glad Purdue has been part of the story of a great many people and we hope to continue to be part of 
not just people's lives, but as a member of the community and uh, part of something that's bigger than ourselves. Uh, we don't consider ourselves alone. Uh, we are part of something bigger, uh, not just in the Purdue and the poultry world, right here in Ohio County, surrounding counties. And uh, we do appreciate the opportunity to come out and share a little bit uh, to be able to uh, display our product. Um, if you've not tried it, I encourage you to go and buy it full price in the store. Help us all out. <laughs> um, I kind of like to close um, with what I think our greatest moment has been at Purdue Farms. Does anybody remember what we were doing about 10 years ago in February? We had just come out of an ice storm. I always hear, remember the old timers talking about the floods back, was it 37, 38 or something? You hear the old timers talking about that and why they talk about it because they've been floods, but that was the flood. Well, folks, we talk about ice storms and snowstorms. As a matter of fact, in the first day of spring in 96, we decided to run product and we got over two feet of snow that day. Uh, needless to say, we didn't finish production that day. But folks, that paled in comparison to the ice storm. Uh, I think it got all of our attention. Uh, remember how eerie it was sitting there in the house at night, power out and hearing the trees crack and crack and break and snap. What an eerie, eerie sound that was. Well, folks, uh, what Purdue Farms did there, they rose to the occasion. They put a uh, tank of kerosene out. Anybody in the community wanted to come as long as it lasted uh, until it was empty. Didn't charge anybody and come out and get kerosene to help heat their house. We give out water free. Anybody that needed water. Uh, so generators and chainsaws at cost on payment plans. Folks, I think that was one of Purdue's greatest moments. There was individuals at Purdue that were letting people come to their houses. Uh, some of the folks that lived toward in Butler County and down in Bowling Green and some there around the plant that still had power let people come to their houses to take a nap, take a hot shower, get cleaned up, use their washer or dryer. Folks, I think that says something about uh, a responsible member of the community. And folks, and to this day, I'm still very proud, you know, because what we could have said was, I'm too bad. Make it on your own. But folks, Purdue rose to the occasion. I believe if we had another disaster, we would race to the occasion there, just like most of us would in the uh, industries we are and the people that we are. And so I just want to close on, on that note. Of, uh, the company we work for, we know that people are our greatest asset. Uh, it is a business, and business has got to be run, but folks, you got to treat people right. We are hiring, so if you know anybody needs a job, please send them our way. I don't think we brought any applications, but it's very easy to get one. Uh, so does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Does Purdue do tours? Uh, we do. Uh, all you would need to do is contact us and then we'd be able to set it up. Mm -hmm. I remember the very first time <laughs> uh, that I took a tour through a chicken plant. Now remember I was raised on a little farm and I've helped uh, dress out chickens and stuff. I can remember as a little boy, power was out for about a week and my, grand my dad killed a rooster and me and my grandmother dressed it out. She made an open flame in the backyard and made chicken and dumplings. Okay, so I was raised on a farm. I, I thought I knew a thing or two about chicken, right? I go to Accomack, Virginia, go out and plant on a tour, and I see these, the chicken feet going through the wall. And I'm looking up there, I'm like, so those are being tossed. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. We make more money on them than anything else. I'm like, yeah, right. No, no, we're not kidding. We make more money on that than anything else because here, we go out on a Friday night, we get a T-bone steak. Anybody with me? T-bone, pork chop. Over in China, folks, they go out for chicken feet. Now, it's only 2.14% of the chicken, but folks, uh, imagine my surprise when on my very first tour to find out, whoa, people eat those. And on our last vacation down in, in uh, Sevierville, uh, I've got a picture. We did not buy them, but tray-packed chicken feet. So... Try at your own risk, but I hear they're good. <laughs> Any other questions? What is the uh, your brand of uh, dog food? Uh, it's uh, uh, help me out. It's uh, full moon and uh, full moon dog treats, and what's the other one? It's not. It's not a drought. I don't think it's it in like the cold. It's in a refrigerator type. Yes. But, the, 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 we, we have two. One of them is called Full Moon, and I'm trying to think what the other one is. Um, is it manufactured and distributed in the U.S.? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yes, because there's been a lot on, well, like, about um, a little dog who died 
because he ate this treat and it had something in it. But then talk around the table, you know, at break time, and you're going, well, that's not the only patient. There are dogs that will die from certain peptides. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I've always been mine for, you know, 30 years, just science diet, because that's what the vet says is mm -hmm. needed, right? And they go, oh, now, that's one of the worst. <laughs> and then they have been saying, you know, if they come from China, the ones that come from China are the ones that's the most risky for the pets. And most people. Fresh pet? Fresh pet, full moon. You take uh, uh, a lot of pet foods, we've got a lot of fillers in them, grains and different things. Yes. Ours is 100% poultry, if it's meat. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can find it, full moon, some good stuff. I highly recommend it. Right. Yeah, last time I tried some, tasted great. <laughs> Ma'am, I honestly don't know where, because we, we don't obviously we don't we don't make the pet treats at our plant. But just be on look at it, and I, I probably get online and look, and you can probably find the closest distributor. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Morris? It's not a question; it's just comment. We're really proud to have Purdue mm -hmm. in our county, and it's proven to be a big asset, a lot more than we knew when it began. Mm -hmm. Well, I can remember starting, they were saying, don't, don't build a chicken house in less than 10 years, you know, you'll lose it all. Folks, still here, still going strong. Uh, if you're interested in growing chickens for us, just see them down here at the grow off office just down from uh, Pizza Hut. So, any other questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. Just a comment. Talking about like hormones and steroids? That, yeah. No, ours is. Uh, uh, that's what I always watch, you know, and read on the packaging. And yours has always had the most good things to say about your chicken. And so whether it's on sale or not, even though I do, I'll just probably ask you when it does go on sale, you know, but whether or not it's perfect all the time. Yeah, we don't, it's, it's all natural. What, what you see is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> And remember those claims you put on there, you just can't put a claim on there. That is, uh, there's, you know, every year you hear people getting in trouble and being sued and everything for putting claims that they can't back up or are misleading. And so we take that very, very seriously, very seriously. We put a lot of, uh, uh, you know, when I look at the cost, we put a lot of our costs for like packaging, advertisements, much more than the average company just because we believe in our product. We want to get it out there. We want it to look as good as possible, be as good as possible. And... Uh, Purdue's always been a leader. Like I said, we were the first to brand chicken. And folks, and when you're a leader, you gotta keep running faster, stay in the same spot, right? And so we gotta keep doing stuff year after year after year to maintain that difference and that competitive advantage. Now there's some uh, poultry companies bigger than us, Tyson, Pilgrim. Uh, Purdue has no desire to be the biggest. We just have a desire to be the best. Anyone else? Sure, just a comment. <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to be the county clerk when Mr. Mm -hmm. Purdue and came and, and Ed Lobster was Commissioner of Agriculture. Ed was here attending those meetings and we could tell uh, Mr. Purdue was a very knowledgeable, very dedicated person. We never dreamed that we would ever see anything like this in mm -hmm. Ohio County yeah. with Purdue Farms. Yeah. And, and we appreciate you so much. Thank yes. you. Yeah, if, if I hadn't said it, I'll say it again. I'm very proud to be part of Purdue Farms. And like I said, been there 23 years. I hope to retire there. Uh, Miranda back there, she's our payroll person that takes care of payroll for over 4,000 people across the company with no overtime. Uh, just a plug there, Miranda. We started on the same day. And so how did we de determine our seniority? We flipped a coin. Uh, but we've both been with the company for, and there's still several folks been there for the long haul, going into our 24th year. And, and uh, here's hoping, here's hoping. Anyone else? Thank you for the comments and the questions and opportunity. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Purdue Farms.
it's a wonderful, wonderful <coughs> thing to have such an impact on the places that you live and that you grow up in. And uh, the company of Purdue Farms is definitely the epitome of a local, community strong, community oriented uh, company. And so we are happy to have them as a member of our chamber. And we're looking forward to hearing all the many exciting things that you all will be having rolling out here over the next uh, few years, months. I know there'll be some other things coming down the pipe, so we're excited to hear about that. With that said, this is the conclusion of our meeting today. Once again, please remember that we will be meeting at the old Wayland School next, next uh, meeting, and uh, it'll be the same time. And we look forward to learning a little bit more about some other opportunities of growth here in Ohio County. Everyone have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time.